Welcome to Prezim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 47 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll learn about instead of delete trigger. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 45 and 46 of this video series. In SQL Server, there are three types of triggers, DML, DDL, and logon triggers. DML triggers are fired in response to DML events. Examples of DML events include insert, update, and delete. DML triggers can further be classified into two types, after triggers and instead of triggers. After triggers are fired automatically after the triggering action, whereas instead of triggers are fired instead of the triggering action. Now we know that in general, instead of triggers are extremely useful whenever you have a view that's based on multiple tables and if you want to either insert data into it or update a view, update that particular view, then instead of triggers are extremely useful. Along the same lines, instead of delete trigger is also used to delete a row from a view that's based on multiple tables. Now we have been working with this TBL department employee table, you know, in all these sessions of where we have discussed about triggers in this video series. So we have TBL department table here which has got department ID and department name columns and we have TBL employee table which has got ID, name, gender and department ID columns. Now if you look at these two tables, the common column between them is the department ID columns. So based on these two tables we have created this view which returns the ID name, gender and department name. Okay, so department name column is coming from TBL department and ID name and gender are coming from TBL department table. So obviously this view is based on these two base tables, TBL employee, TBL department. Now let us say somebody is trying to delete you know, from the view. So obviously delete from view where ID is equal to 1. So we are trying to delete John's record from this view. So obviously when you delete this record from this view and we know we know that this view is based on these two tables TBL employee and TBL department so your delete is definitely going to affect the underlying base table. So there is a confusion. Do you want to actually delete John's record or the HR department record from TBL department table? Okay so SQL Server will actually not allow any modification that affects multiple base tables. So you're trying to update this view or delete a row from this view and that delete is going to affect multiple base tables in this case TBL employee and TBL department. So when I when you try to execute this statement you will get an error view or function view employee details is not updatable because the modification affects multiple base tables. So let's look at this in action. So in SQL Server Management Studio, we have got these two tables, TBL employee and TBL department. Let's try to retrieve the data from them. So employee and department table. So let's create a view on these two tables. Create view. Com command completed successfully. Refresh the views folder and you should see the view there. So now let's select the data from the view. So select star from that specific view. So we get the data as expected. All right, now let's try to ex execute this delete statement, delete from view employees where ID is equal to one. So we get that error, view of function, view employee details is not updatable because the modification affects multiple base tables. All right, so now let's create a, you know, an instead of delete trigger on this view. Okay, so obviously to create a trigger, we use create trigger statement. So here is the, trigger that we are creating. Let's look at this. So we are creating this trigger, create trigger, a meaningful trigger name on view employee details and you are creating this trigger instead of delete. So this trigger should be fired instead of the delete statement as begin end. And then all you are doing here is delete TBL employee from, okay, so this delete statement is actually making use of a join. So we are, we are joining TBL employee with the deleted table. So we have spoken about joins in the previous session of this video series. So if you're new to joins, please check that video. So what we are doing here is basically, we know that triggers makes use of two special tables called inserted and deleted tables. Okay, inserted table will contain the newly inserted data. And we have spoken about this when we, you know, discussed about instead of insert trigger and when we use instead of update trigger deleted and inserted table both of them are used 
okay deleted table contains the data before update which means the old data and the inserted table contains the new data after the update okay so instead of update makes use of both the tables whereas instead of delete you know makes use of only the deleted table so here the deleted table contains only the deleted records and inserted table will basically be empty when you are making use of instead of delete trigger similarly for instead of insert the deleted table will be empty because you're only inserting a row so the in the newly inserted row will be present in that inserted table okay so what we are doing here we're actually retrieving I mean we are joining the deleted table because if you delete five records all those five records will be there in the deleted table so we are taking the all the IDs from the deleted table joining them with TBL employee and deleting them from TBL employee table so you're doing that using joins and another way to do it is actually to use a subquery and if you look at this subquery it's very simple to understand all you're saying here is delete from TBL employee where ID n select ID from deleted table so you're taking the ID from the deleted table all the IDs that are present in the deleted table within the subquery and then those are the IDs that are being deleted from TBL employee table so obviously this subquery is easy to understand just by looking at that they are very simple to read uh, but then from a performance point in most of the cases joins are faster than subqueries but however there are rare cases you know when you only need a subset of records from the table that you're joining with subqueries can be faster okay so if you have two tables and uh, you want to join those two tables and from the other table with which you're joining let's say it's a huge table which has got millions and millions of records but then in that table you only want two or three records and there is a condition based on which you are selecting those two or three records obviously so in those cases use a subquery because you're not joining with every row you know in that huge table you know when you select those rows using the subquery your your query will be much faster than using join so but these are very rare but in general we use joins in fact when you use subqueries SQL Server converts them into joins okay but then in general it's better to use joins over subqueries okay so that's the trigger that we are using here instead of delete trigger so let's create that command completed successfully so if you look at the view itself refresh that and if we expand the view you should see the trigger that we have just created TR view employee details instead of delete trigger now let's try to delete from that view and see what's going to happen now before we do that let's select the data from the employees view so we have records 1 and 2 so two rows affected which means we have deleted those rows and to confirm that let's select the rows back from the view select star from view and you should see records with ID 1 and 2 are no longer there and just to make sure we have deleted them from the base tables so from the employee table records with ID is equal to 1 and 2 are gone okay now if you look at this the subquery part is actually commented you know but you can either use joins or subqueries so let's actually try to uncomment this one the subquery and comment this just to prove that you know your subquery works in the same way and obviously since we have already created this trigger you just need to alter this because it already exists there so alter trigger execute command completed successfully now let's try to delete records with ID 3 comma 4 and see if it works the exact same way two rows affected let's select from the view if you look at that records with ID 3 and 4 are no longer there let's check that in the base tables just to make sure so records with ID 3 and 4 are no longer there even in TBL employees table so 
On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.